I drive this car every single fucking day. Every single day. And I push this car as hard as I want to whenever I want to. So that's the price that you pay for having an Infiniti G37 at 175,000 miles. Get your ball. Today, I'm just gonna talk about some common problems that I have with my Infiniti. You know, I'm at 175,000 miles right now. So I just wanted to go over a couple things that has been going wrong. All right, we're gonna start. We're, I'm gonna tell you guys about like the worst thing at the end that I'm really dealing with that's still not even really that bad. But we're gonna start off with this, the surface rust. This is the surface rust that I'm starting to see now at 170,000 miles which still ain't even that bad, you know, to be honest with you. Just a little bit of surface rust right here, surface rust right here, right here on my door, and then a little bit on top. Okay, so that's one, right? And the second thing that I am starting to notice about my car now is the rubber sealant that's going around is starting to dry rot and crack. Like right here, this is starting to dry rot on that side. Okay, let's go around to the other side. We're going to show you right here, starting to dry rot and actually crease in, curl in. Same from right here. Um, and actually, like, the inner sides of the window, too. This had actually broke off from Thor because um, he likes to jump in and out of the window, but that's starting to dry rot. What other problems am I dealing with right now? Let me see. I, I had to write these down. Okay, so the only other thing that I am currently dealing with is my back passenger rear caliper that I feel like is just starting to seize up a little bit you know it should be that's pretty basically normal I'm gonna have to replace the rear caliper because I've had this car for a, what is it going on four winters I drove I drove this fucking infinity through four winters all right so you know that's kind of expected so third one is the rear caliper and then the fourth one is this back window the window motor in this car is starting to go out you know it goes out sometimes it'll roll down sometimes it won't roll up so that means that the window motor is going out um really other than that the last thing that i am dealing with which is going to cost the most money you know but still not even that bad is I'll go ahead and start the car for you guys right now and show you. It could be one of three things that I'm actually dealing with. One, it could be either the starter, the battery, or the fuel pump. Now, just because it's having, I'll show you guys, just because it could be one of these three things. Oh, here's the other thing. I'm gonna add in this extra one. Look at all these keys I got. The batteries and the fucking key, they go dead. I don't know why they go dead. Like the, the battery's in the fucking key. I mean, in the car, and I have to smack it. I just smack it like this. And then it turns it on. And now I could probably start the car. And this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, okay. It didn't do it right there. But sometimes the car would just start like that and I'll have to hit it with a little bit of gas and then it'll start on it'll turn on let's see if I could do it again let's let's see let's see if I can get it to do it sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't so let's see if it'll do it wow okay I guess it's starting up perfect now but yeah basically these are all very minor things that are actually wrong with this car for it being at 175,000 miles. Very minor, minor problems. Mainly cosmetic when, it, when you wanna think about it when it comes down to the end of the day. These are mainly all cosmetic problems except for a few mechanical problems. Like I feel like I might need to either replace the starter or the battery in this car for it to just be running perfect again. And that's very, very minor for having a reliable car. Like I drive this car every single fucking day every single day and i push this car as hard as i want to whenever i want to so that's the price that you pay for having an infinity g37 at 175,000 miles which is you get your money's worth it's quick it's easy to work on and it's easy to maintain and it's fun it's a nice daily reliable car that's why so many people have these cars right now that's why it's such a buzz and 
the market for the G37s is at the lowest point you're going to ever see it at. I've been seeing G37s go for at least four to five thousand dollars on Facebook Marketplace, which is insane because I first originally bought this same car right here for ten thousand dollars. So if you could get, I mean, your G is not going to be the same as mine because I have the sport trim, the all wheel drive sport trim. G37 XS. So these hold their value a little bit more than like the base model G37. But like the base model G37 is not really even that different. You know, I just got a little couple extra perks in this thing. Kind of like above me, um, the IPL Infinity, they just got a couple more things that I don't have. But those IPLs hold the value the most. And then after that, it's the sport trims. Like after that, it's the the manual G37s, they hold their value the most. Then it goes to these um, all-wheel drive sport trim G37s. And then it goes down to the base G37s after that. So, yes, I definitely think that for the price point of these G37s, you get the most of your money's worth than really 80% of the cars nowadays. You either get a piece of shit car an overpriced expensive ass car with the same type of you know um horsepower and torque of this thing but this is japanese you know it's japanese muscle so it's worth it to buy and i think it's worth it but yeah, that's really it for this video i just wanted to talk about some common issues that i've been having with this car which is really barely any um so yeah i'm glad not to have not not to have any like I'm glad that I didn't have any major mechanical work with this thing so far at 175,000 miles, which is insane. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Deuces.